What time is it? I don't know. I didn't know. It was 11.55 p.m. I lose motivation to talk properly when I'm tired, although this was definitely an overreaction. At most, it would have taken an extra second to tell him the time, but I wasn't really thinking. I just wanted to get home, ignore all social interactions. I didn't even look up to see the man's face. He left without saying anything, limping as he walked, leaving me alone at the bus stop, waiting for the final departure of the night. A single minute past midnight was the usual time on the schedule, although it's almost always late, despite only ever having a few passengers at most. My late shift at work had me used to these empty hours of the night. This specific part of town lacked in nightlife entertainment, leaving little reason to be out after dark. The shops were long closed, waiting for the bustling environment of the next morning. Until then, they remained silent. Some had their lights on all night long, spilling echoes of life into an otherwise inactive street. If the rapture occurred with me at this bus stop, it would take a long while for the news to reach me, as I simply continued waiting for an ever later, never arriving bus. These are the kinds of thoughts I have as I wait in the dark for the bus. The occasional breaks in these thoughts are often caused by me checking the digital sign above me, displaying an estimated time for all oncoming departures, expecting to see 5 minutes or perhaps a more delayed 10 minutes. I hadn't planned on having to read a whole sentence. So as I finished checking the sign, only then did my mind realize that it had not even seen a number. I had checked the sign but did not comprehend the content. My double take showed me what I had missed. The next bus is not real. Do not board. I stare it for a moment before looking around. What I expected to see, I do not know. Perhaps some prankster giggling at their work, or more sinisterly, a shadowy figure looming over to guide this paranormal event. Nothing. I saw nothing. The same street I had become familiar with had nothing new. It remained empty, with me as its only sign of life, so I waited. It was 11.59 p.m. by this point, so only two minutes remained. On time, for what may have been the first time ever, the bus arrived, a single minute past midnight, and here it was, pulling around the corner, approaching the stop. I put my hand out to signal my need to board, feeling relieved that my only way home hadn't been cancelled. As the bus approached, I noticed the dark interior, the headlights were on, but the lights inside were all off. I could not make out whether any passengers were on board or even who the driver was. Being a regular, I knew most of the final route drivers, but this time, it was anybody's guess. I got onto the bus, putting down the same change I always do. Bit dark, isn't it? Nobody replied, as the doors closed behind me and the bus continued its way forward. I smiled awkwardly despite knowing that the driver could not see me and found a seat. I never found out whether there were any more passengers, but I could only hope that nobody else had to go through these next events. Almost immediately, I noticed stops being omitted from the route. A turn missed here, a completely wrong turn taken there. A panic set in that I had somehow gotten on the wrong bus, despite knowing for a fact that the bus I always get is the only local one that runs this late. Convincing myself that an unfortunate series of road closures had occurred, I remained calm and waited it out.
After 10 minutes of this, we had circled back to the stop I had boarded at. In front of us, I noticed a more normal bus. The bus I was supposed to board. The lights were on with a few passengers. It was waiting at the stop. I spoke slightly louder than the rumble of the engine. Excuse me, can I get off? I'm on the wrong bus. No answer. As we slowly passed the correct bus, I could see the passengers inside all staring ahead. My gaze followed theirs, meeting at an ambulance parked just slightly in front. A small group of paramedics kneeled down in the beams of the bus's headlights surrounding a body on the floor. I couldn't make out the body's face as it was just out of sight, although one leg looked twisted. The passengers looked distraught, whistled, the bus drivers stood talking to the paramedics. I stood up. I need to leave at the next stop. As I spoke, I pressed the bell, and the only sign of any internal lights lit up at the front of the bus, stopping. The sign was immediately turned off. Subsequent bell presses neither made the sound nor lit up the sign. I need to, but before I could finish my sentence, the bus sped up suddenly, the force pushing me back into my seat. As I tried to stand up, the wheel screeched as we turned a sharp corner without seeming to slow down at all. Again, the force pushed me back down. The speed continued to rise, the wheels on the bus went faster and faster until the outside world became simply a blur. I had never seen a car go this fast, let alone a road vehicle as large as this. I thought for sure that I was going to die right there. What are you doing? I found myself yelling out amid the panic. The driver, for the first and last time spoke. I don't know. My mind raced almost as fast as my body was being thrown about. The world beyond the windows seemed morphed into a void of black, although the effects of our speed were still evident on my body. As the velocity pushed me in all directions, I felt as though we had somehow gotten even faster, although this may have been the darkness forbidding my eyes of any reference for our true speed. We came to a sudden stop. As I fell forward, the fall was violent, but still not as bad as you'd expect for a speed change of that magnitude. My nose hit the floor, causing a great deal of pain. I stood up, holding my face, trying to regain my balance. As the dizziness subsided, I began to notice where I was. We were outside my home. The bus stop I get off at is a five minute walk from here. Yet, here we were, directly outside my house. The doors gently open it. Desperate my desire to leave as fast as possible, I found myself walking to the front of the bus. As I reached the door, I stopped, turning around slowly to face the still shrouded in darkness bus driver. I spoke what I always do. Thank you. I stepped onto the pavement outside as the doors closed behind me, followed by the bus driving forward into the darkness. I looked down at my watch. A minute past midnight. 